Y'all gonna get that young man hurt. Good people, it's your boy Mr. Rome, Cowboys Fan Talk, right back, like I never left. What's up with y'all, man? How are y'all feeling? Hey, thank y'all, man. Before I get into the content today, before I talk about who probably gonna get hurt, I just wanna say thank y'all, man. You wanna join the team? It's real easy. Do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. I appreciate all the love. Um, Today we're going to talk about the lion. We're talking about Micah Parsons. You've seen the thumbnail. You know what's going on. Look, last week, Micah Parsons did something he ain't never done in the league, which is almost impossible because Micah Parsons is one of the best players in the NFL. I'd be saying that he's the best NFL player because he's just so versatile. He can do everything. Micah could probably play every position on the field. If he really tried, he could probably figure out how to play quarterback. That's how I feel about Micah Parsons. So... To see last week that he had no statistical things accumulated, no assisted tackles, no sacks. I think he did have some pressures. Um, somebody in the comments let me know if he had any pressures. I think he did have a pressure or two. But no physical stats to write down on the stat sheet. Fine. I didn't care. I saw him out there. I seen the stuff he was doing. I was fine with it. But then here comes Dallas media. Here comes some of the national media. Being disrespectful, not realizing that Micah Parsons, although last week, it's easy to check out one of those games, man. We blowing the Giants off the earth the second time in a row. It's like, ah, you know what I'm saying? Just his mere presence is helping other people get sacks. You know what I'm saying? Neville getting a sack and Sam getting a sack. And it's just one of those things where, you know, other people are eating from his mere presence. But that's fine. You know, we should be thankful to have Micah Parsons on our team. We have an Aaron Donald, you know what I'm saying, a Deion Sanders, a generational defensive talent or generational talent. You don't have to put a qualifier on it. And Dallas media is being disrespectful. They had this whole thing today where they're saying, is Micah Parsons slowing down? And shout out to my brother, my brother Jay Tuck. Um, Y'all know him, CFO Sports. Y'all better know who Jay Tuck is. Um, just highlighting this. And he did a video that really inspired mine because I want to talk about linebackers, but I'll do that tomorrow. Um well, Mike is a linebacker, so I guess this all goes together. Um, but, you know, watching this video, and y'all go subscribe to his channel, too, because we're we a family, we're a community. And he's just talking about the fact that, you know, are y'all crazy? Michael Parsons is still leading the league in pressures, I believe, um, and, and pass rush win rate, I'm sorry, in double teams. And he's high up there in pressures. I don't know if he's leading the league. Now, he has seven and a half sacks, and I know somebody's like, that's not good enough. He's like eighth or ninth. Trust me, it's fine. A lot of these people go on spurts. This week, this week in particular, I feel like y'all going to get Bryce Young hurt. Y'all going to get him hurt. I've seen Micah Parsons when he gets locked in. I've seen it in playoff games. I've seen it. I've seen it at the start of the season. I remember when he tweeted out over the summer. I'm showing up to New York in a black Nike, black Nike tech suit and black Air Force Ones. I knew what that meant. I knew what that meant. He's not a play. He's already dangerous when he's chilling, when he's not trying too hard. You know, but what I've noticed about this team, and I want to talk about this, is the squeaky wheel gets the oil. Right? Right? Mike uh, Mike McCarthy might not say in the media what he's going to do because he likes to just not give everything away. I love that about him. So I'm starting to try to read between the lines. Like, he'll blatantly lie to you, you know. We're not playing fantasy football. When he's talking about getting, like, Brandon Cook's targets. And then he comes out, Brandon, kids, Brandon Cook's gets 10 targets. 10 targets. CeeDee Lamb goes over to the corner. He looked tight. He upset with the team. Team recognizes it. He breaking records now. Three-plus games, 150 yards, 10 catches. You see what I'm saying? Um, the media, everybody starts to talk about Rico Dowdle needs the ball. And it's like, ah, you know, we're we happy with what Tony's doing. We see Rico, but we're chilling. And all of a sudden, Rico has his best game of the year. I think best game is a Cowboy. And I think that's going to continue this week with, with Carolina's porous blocking, uh, our porous um, defensive line. I think that um, although they have a couple of players, like a decent D tackle, Burns is a great 
Um, they're not great against the run, and we about to about to get in there. Um, Micah Parsons, though, man, Bryce Young likes to hold the ball. They're like 29th to 30th in points. He's not reading well. And I know Thielen's trying to get off a little bit because he's over-targeted and things like that. I get it. He leads the league in targets, I believe, by a mile. But this week, that's not going to save you. It's not. It's not. Now, I see Frank Wright wants to take over play calling. And, you know, every time people play the Cowboys, they want to do something different. Like, I'm taking over play calling, switching up this. We're going to add RPO in there. They're going to try to mix it up because, they, you know, they want to make a point versus the Cowboys. You know, it's always... You know, it's it's not even a nationally televised, te nationally televised game, I don't think. We're not the game of the week. But it's still just doing anything versus the Cowboys can change your whole career. So if your whole season is bad, just do one good thing versus this team. You can change everything. Change the whole outlook. You know, it's so crazy that people hate on us so much, but we seem to be the barometer for the league. But anyway, Micah Parsons, man, seven and a half sacks. We're going into a game where this is an offensive line that is terrible. Literally just cut one of their guards. The interior is bad. And you know Micah will come from everywhere. He likes to come from the middle. I see that Bryce Young's trying to run more, but I just look, man. Sam Williams has been coming on. I seen Dante Fowler coming on. Osa's been getting busy. D-Law is D-Law. Our pass rush right now is ferocious. And you want to piss off the leader? Like you want to piss him off. The 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 the, na the not the national well the national media been disrespected too. I heard you, Keyshawn. I heard you, Richard Sherman. Although no one really takes y'all seriously, it's more fuel to the fire. But for the 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 local media to imply that Mike is slowing down and to hear Brian Broadus, shout out to Brian Broadus. I, I know he's a Cowboys scout legend or whatever, and that's fine. That's fine. But we see things differently. And for him to say, you know, I watched the film and he just, you know, he looks disinterested. His effort looked low. And it's like, why would you tear down the best player on our team pound for pound? Now, y'all know I'm, I'm I'm captain. I'm the president of the four fan club. Dak Prescott is my dude. But we're just talking about pound for pound best athlete player on our team. It's Micah Parsons. And that's fine. I don't. Th I think Dak will say that. Why, why don't we celebrate and cover our own? Why couldn't you just say it? Hey, man, Dan Quinn's going to get Micah more involved this week. That's why the fans love channels like mine. Because we support the team. Now, look, I'm not a reporter. I've said that plenty of times. I'm not trying to be a columnist, a journalist. I don't want to work for... That, that's not what I do. I'm a fan with a loud voice. And I appreciate the support I get from y'all. You know what I'm saying? And from what I see... It's one of those games where you took Micah for granted. You wanted to throw him into coverage and do everything else, but you really are muffling his best skill set. You have to get him after the passer. He would have destroyed DeVito. But the Cowboys was lazy last week. And they threw him in the linebacker for majority of the second half. Now, maybe they were trying to save him because it's less wear and tear on the body because of the games coming up. I don't know the strategy, but I know that Micah came out in his tweet and said, I'm speechless. I ain't never been this speech. I forgot what it said. And then he started to comment about, oh, you know, when Sam Williams said, free me. And all of a sudden he started getting freed. Sam Williams is one thing. Micah Parsons is a whole nother beast. So y'all keep playing with him. But I like it, though. I like it, though. Fire up the lion. Keep playing. But when he do something like break Bryce um, Young in half, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to be, yo, man, he probably, you shouldn't have threw him like that. You know you're only 120 pounds. That ain't my fault. He got he to gotta eat something before the game. Because I know Mike is coming. I just want to know how y'all feel about it in the comments, man. For the audacity, the audacity to say he's slowing down. Micah just getting started. It's a long year. It's a long year. We got eight games left. Let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. But look, it's your boy, Mr. Rome. I just want to know how y'all feel. Um, I'm telling you this. This is a warning to the league. Out of all the Cowboys, all the Cowboys, Coaches, players, everything like that. Micah Parsons? He ain't the one to play with. 